Okay, so we're back. Now the first thing we're going to do, of course, is add keywords um, in seller.tools in the app here. We're going to find the best possible keywords for our listing. Now even if you have a current listing and you have keywords in it currently, um, we do suggest that you go through and use our keyword wizard to find all the keywords. A lot of them will be the same, yes, but you most likely will find keywords and phrases um, that you do not have in your listing. Um, therefore giving you more to rank for and more to be um, organically um, seen for. So in order to start to gather keywords, what you're going to do is click on the listing or the ASIN that you want to work with. So we're going to go ahead and click on our shadow box that we started with. And then we're going to click on add keywords. Now there's a few different ways to add keywords. I also want to tell you that during this series of videos, you don't need to um, completely remember how to do each and every one of these tools. Because if you do go into the app afterwards and start working on this yourself, and you forget how to do something, at every step of the way, there's a little learn video bar up at the top. And there are detailed instructions on how to use each of the tools. As you click to each new tool, there are instructions there. So use this guide um, to show you how everything kind of fits together and go through it completely. And then if you do have questions, you can either, of course, come back to these videos. Um, this is more of a complete platform walkthrough. Um, and there are more detailed instructions in the learn videos. Okay, so let's move forward. What we're going to do is click on Keyword Wizard. Now, if you prefer to find keywords just by using a couple of ASINs, maybe your competitor's ASINs that you know you're really definitely wanting to do that, you can use, use Find Keyword by ASIN, or if you already have a manual list, you can certainly upload a manual list. However, I do suggest that you use our Keyword Wizard. Sometimes we get stuck with our old lists. Um, some of, like I said, some of them may be the same, um, but they will come through with the Keyword Wizard. So I'm going to show you using Keyword Wizard since I feel that's the best way. Of course, you can choose another way. Once you click on Keyword Wizard, it's going to ask you to enter the keyword that best describes your product. So this can be, it doesn't have to be a single keyword, of course. It can be a keyword phrase. Now, you don't want it to be too long tail, but you also don't want it to be um, too vague. So we're not going to put frame. Um, we're not going to put picture frame. We'll probably just put shadow box. We're not going to put the size at this point. Um, but if you do need to add, you know, one more word to your uh, main keyword here, you can. Uh, I just like to stay detailed enough so that I don't get too vague of keywords um, and not so detailed that I don't get enough. I hope that makes sense. And then we're going to press next. Now, the cool thing about the Keyword Wizard is it's going to take you through um, the um, Amazon report cards that you find in the Competitor Builder. It's going to take you through our Reverse ASIN Search, R2A, and it's going to take you through Last Search. So it'll walk you through all three of those. It makes it really super easy. So um, here are some shadow box frames. Um, it doesn't look like any of these are our size, but that's okay. Um, I did a six by six. Um, I just kind of randomly pulled out that um, I may have just actually, actually um, found a great product to sell. <laughs> now everyone don't go and sell that. We don't want any uh, silicone spatula uh, extravaganzas going on. So let's just uh, click on these. Now you can see these are sorted by BSR. So of course you want to find the lowest BSR with the products that are closest to your product. So you can get the best keywords. So the higher performing products, of course, this probably isn't a hugely sought after product, but that's okay. Um, we're just going to click on a couple of these. This is a shadow box display case. Uh, this is another shadow box. That's great. Um, and another shadow box. So we're going to pick the ones with the lowest BSR. It will default from low to high. So you'll always know that. Just make sure that they are comparable to your products. And so these are the three competitor ASINs that we're going to be working with. And we're going to click next. Now, the first thing it's going to do is take you through um, Amazon report cards. Well, actually, the first thing, sorry, the first thing it's going to do is ask you to either choose one of these in this word cloud. So it can be shadow box. Uh, I actually like shadow box frame, maybe. Um, that might even be better. So you can either leave it and specify your own shadow box, 
or you can choose your master keyword um, from the top. I think I'm actually going to change my mind and do shadow box frame and then add master keywords. It's not going to make a huge difference, um, but I kind of like that. So I'm going to go ahead and choose that. <clears throat> Let's see. Now, what it's going to do is pull up the Amazon report cards for all three of those. Now, Amazon report cards, um, again, found in the competitor builder if you want to get to that a la carte. That's just basically how Amazon describes your product. It's a little bit different than R2A. R2A reverse ASIN is all the keywords that these products, those competitor ASINs are ranked for. This is how Amazon sees these products. So if Amazon had eyes, this is how they would describe this product. Their eyes are basically are keywords. And so these are all the keywords. Now, the interesting thing is that when you have a product that I have zero keywords. I literally have the word, I have six, six and shadow and box, I think in the title. I have no keywords in my listing, but you can see, this is going to show you, you can see that some of these are already indexed, these keywords. And then there's some keywords that are not indexed. So the more obscure uh, keywords in here, these, a lot of these are numbers, but still considered keywords. Now, the reason that these are indexed already of course, shadow, that's not even shadow, but shadow is indexed, shadow box is indexed. It's in the title, so that's going to be indexed. However, some of these already are indexed. These, This is a misspelling, so this is Amazon saying, you know, did you mean? And then some of these are indexed because that particular product automatically indexes for these types of. So if it says like six by six shadow box and it's in the category of picture frames, you can see picture and most likely frames, um, decor, things like that. They automatically index for you. So that's a really interesting um, case study, actually. Six by six, of course, and the number six, those all are indexed as well. That's in my title. And the X, because that's the little um, by sign um, that I use. So those are all indexed. I generally like to keep the things that are already indexed. So we're going to keep those possibly not the misspellings now that I know that I don't need to keep them in my listing to have them index. I'm going to take those out and keep my keyword list very, very clean. And then we're left with the keywords that we are not indexed for. Now this is where the cool part comes in. You get to sort through these um, inside this keyword processor. Now, my size of my frame is six by six. We already have that. We're already indexed for that. It's over here. I've moved that to the relevant column. I want to move anything that doesn't describe my product and not relevant to my product into the irrelevant. You can see there's a lot of 10 by 10, 10 by 13. There's probably some eights in there. I think one of them was eight by 10. That's okay. We just don't need those. We'll just leave them out. What I like to do is go through and find the ones I do want, move them over to the relevant and bulk move everything else over to irrelevant. So if I had a two pack, of course, I'd want the two. Um, if it was 20 inches or it was 16 by 20, I would be picking these, but I don't. So I'm just going to keep moving along. Um, I do like this 3D. Um, I think people uh, may be describing things like 3D, like if you want to have a 3D frame. So I'm going to pick that. So you can see it's really important to kind of look through this um, and really find some of those nuggets of things that maybe you didn't think of if yours was acrylic maybe it's acrylic um adventure fund so as you can see the the shadow box frame that i chose actually has a hole on the top <clears throat> and people use them for things called adventure funds or you can put wine corks in them so for now i'm going to keep that i'm not quite sure what my product is yet quite honestly um but we're going to keep that. Um, let's see, American Flat Shadow Box. American is actually a brand. I'm going to I'm going to keep that. Um, Antique Shadow Box. Who knows? Um, art, artwork, maybe for awards. So I'm just going to kind of methodically go through all of these. Now remember, in the beginning, there is going to be a lot because we're just starting this listing. It's going to take a little bit of time. But keep in mind that back in the day when we were going through this, we were using spreadsheets um, and we were having to delete and add and sort and all kinds of things. So this is really super fast compared to that. So what I'm going to do is just go through this very quickly. Um, it's probably not going to be perfect, 
Um, but I will go through this. I'm going to put you on pause. I'm going to move everything I like over to relevant. And anything else, I'm going to move to irrelevant, and then we'll move on.